Welcome to preeminent test prep. Today I'll be taking you through the writing and language section of SAT practice test 4. I'll be showing you how to approach the writing and language section of the SAT and I'll be giving you my tips, tricks, and advice for the section. I'll be showing you how to define what type of question you're being asked and how to use that in order to find the correct answer. I'll also be explaining grammar rules and how to apply them in order to eliminate wrong answer choices. Now let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with section one, and as I get to the questions, I'll go ahead and show you how to identify what type of questions being asked pretty quickly, and then I'll take you through the correct answer and give an explanation. All right, section one, ghost mural. In 1932, the well-known Mexican muralist David Alfaro Sequeros was commissioned to paint a mural on the second story exterior wall of a historic building in downtown Los Angeles. Sequeros was asked to celebrate tropical America in his work which he accordingly titled America Tropical. And here's how I know it's which, because I have Sequeiros was asked to celebrate Tropical America in his work. It's our independent clause. So I'm gonna do ID for independent clause. And then we have our A positive, comma, which he accordingly titled America Tropical. If we look at our other options, they're all independent clauses after it, right? And if we have an independent clause, comma, and another independent clause, that would create a comma splice, right? And we can't have that. So we would have, it was titled accordingly America Tropical. That's an independent clause. We would have accordingly, he titled it America Tropical. That's an independent clause. And if we didn't change it, we would also have, he accordingly titled it America Tropical. So our answer is going to be B. All right. He painted the mural's first two sections featuring images of a tropical rainforest and a Maya pyramid during the day. So now we have our one word at the beginning of a sentence with a comma. So this is going to be our transition word. When we have that, we have to read the rest of the sentence to find out what goes there. And then we go back and we see what word best connects our previous sentence to our new sentence. So we have to avoid scrutiny, Sequeiros painted the final section of the mural the centerpiece at night. All right, so we painted the mural's first two sections during the day and the final piece at night. So that's contrasting, right? We had first two pieces in the day, last piece at night, contrasting, which means however, it's gonna be our word there. So we have however, to avoid scrutiny, Sequeiros painted the final section of the mural, the centerpiece, the centerpiece is an A positive, describing our final section of the mural, which means we're gonna offset it by commas here. And we know it's commas because we're given a comma here, so we have to have a comma after centerpiece. So our answer there is going to be B. Let me go ahead and fix that to make it neater. Our answer there is going to be B. Right, and another way to think of it, if you were to read this, Sequeiros painted the final section of the mural at night. We could remove the centerpiece and the sentence still works, right? So that's how another way we can know that our comma goes there if you're stuck. So our answer is going to be B. All right. Question four, which choice best connects the sentence with the previous paragraph? All right, so we're kind of looking to connect it to our previous paragraph and lead into this paragraph. All right, well, what was our previous paragraph about? Our previous paragraph was about how Sequeiros was painting a mural and how he painted one sec two sections during the day and he painted one section at night. And the part he did at night is the centerpiece of it, right? All right. So we have the reason for Sequeiros' secrecy became clear when the mural was confided. Well, in order to actually solve for this first part, it's going to be helpful to go ahead and figure out what this one's going to be, right? Well, the reason for his secrecy became clear when the mural was confided. Well, a better word, if we look at our options, would be unveiled, right? He's unveiling the mural to the public, right? He's not imparting it. He's not promulgated it. He is not including it. He's unveiling it to the public, right? All right, so now we look at our answer choices for four. Well, if we think about it, what we just read makes perfect sense, right? The reason for his secrecy, which we described above him painting the centerpiece at night, became clear when the mural was unveiled, right? So that one's gonna be no change. If we look at our other options, we'd have all three sections of the mural were on display. That's not really connecting it to why he painted his last section at night, right? There's gotta be a reason for that. And if we look at C, the community turned out in large numbers. What well, we really wanna connect it to that previous paragraph where we talked about and painting in secrecy at night, the centerpiece of it, right? And now if we look at our next sentence, we have the centerpiece of the work was dominated by images of native people being oppressed and included 
and here's how I know it's included. First off, identifying the type of question I'm being asked, I see I have one word underlined middle of the sentence, which means I'm probably replacing that word or doing no change, right? It's a question about word choice. And then I go back, I need my parallelism, right? I have was dominated, that's past tense. Okay, so I have past tense, so I'll put past. So I need past tense here. Including is not past tense, included is past tense. So my answer there is gonna be B. All right, they eventually ordered the mural to be literally whitewashed or painted over with white paint. However, by the 1970s, the white paint had begun to fade and the bright colors of the mural were beginning to show through. At the same time, a social and civil rights movement for Mexican Americans was working to raise awareness of Mexican American cultural identity. Artists associated with this this what, right? We want to be specific, this movement, right? Our civil, social and civil rights movement for Mexican Americans, this movement. Artists associated with this movement began to rediscover and promote the work of the Mexican muralists. So our answer is gonna be D, right? We want to be specific there. We want to give our subject, right? The artists are associated with what? This movement. They began to rediscover and promote the work of Mexican muralists, particularly Securos. To them, America Tropical was an example of how art in public space could be used to celebrate Mexican-American heritage while at the same time making a political statement. Inspired by Securos and the other muralists, this new generation of artists strove to emulate the old mural masters. Okay, now we're asked what choice effectively combines the underlined sentences. And we can already kind of tell that just because we have two sentences all underlined, period, right there. All right, so we have the result was an explosion of mural painting that spread throughout California and the southwestern United States in the 1970s. It was the Chicano mural movement. Okay, so what I like to do when we have combining sentences, I like to go smallest sentence to biggest, right? So I'm going to look for the one with the least amount of lines here. They all have four, and they're all about the same. In that case, if they're all the same, I move down from A to D, right? If they're all the same, I just move in order. Okay, so we have the result was an explosion. The Chicano Miro movement of Miro painting that spread throughout California and the southwestern United States in the 1970s. Well, the result really was the Chicano Miro movement. So we wouldn't really want to say the result was an explosion and then say the Chicano Miro movement. We'd want to say the result was the Chicano Miro movement and then describe that. We use an A positive to describe that. So A is going to be wrong. If we look at B, we have the result was the Chicano Miro movement, comma, and then giving us our A positive describing our Chicano mural movement, an explosion of mural painting that spread throughout California and the southwestern United States in the 1970s, right? So our a whole A positive here from and to our end, that's our A positive. It's all describing our Chicano mural movement. So right there, we're touching on every major point in our sentences, combining them. It's all grammatically correct. Our answer is going to be B. All right, we have hundreds of large, colorful new murals depicting elements of Mexican-American life and history appeared during this period, some in designated cultural locations, but many more in abandoned lots, on unused buildings, or painted on infrastructure. Well, here what I see, when I have a list of three, I'm looking for parallelism, parallel structure. So I see in abandoned lots, okay, I see on unused buildings, and then I have or painted. Well, what I'm seeing here is I have in and on. So I'm gonna to wanna to start this one, not with painted, right? You would wanna start with something like on and something like that, right? So if I look here, I can get rid of A because it starts with painted. I can't delete it because then I'm starting with infrastructure. And if we look here, we've got our prepositions in and on. So we want something before infrastructure. So we're not gonna delete it. And then we'd have B, they were painted on. Nope, we don't want that we would want on infrastructure, right? Because we have in abandoned lots, on unused buildings, or on infrastructure, right? And it, it'd probably honestly be better if it was like on unused infrastructure or something like that, just so that we fit the pattern with the other two better. But C is the best that we can do given our answer choices. So we're gonna go with C. And C is the correct answer. Many of these murals can still be seen today, although some have been well-maintained. Some have not been well-maintained. Fortunately, a new group of artists has discovered the murals and efforts are underway to clean, restore, and repaint them. Once again, Securos American Tropical is leading the way. All right, I see this at the end. It doesn't go into the next sentence, so I'm just thinking of, I'm gonna go to my answer, or my question. It says, which choice most effectively set up information that follows? I need to know my answer, information that follows to answer. So even though it makes sense on first pass, I need to read more to make sure, right? 
So we have after a lengthy and complex restoration process, this powerful work, right, American Tropicals, our powerful work, is now a tourist attraction complete with a visitor, center, and rooftop viewing platform. All right, well, what is that? What we see is that we have our movement to rediscover, repaint the paintings. We see American Tropical is leading the way, right? It was a lengthy and complex restoration process, so it was leading. And then it also is now a tourist attraction with a visitor center and a rooftop viewing platform. Well, what does that sound like? That sounds like it's probably their top top mural, right? It's leading the way once again, right? It was rest, restored after a lengthy and complex process, and now it's a top attraction, once again, leading the way, right? So our answer's gonna be no change right there, right? It's not at risk of destruction. It's not being cleaned and restored. It already was restored, right? After that long and lengthy restoration process, and it's not awaiting its moment of appreciation because it's already being appreciated by tourists, right? Now, if we look at 11, we have, at this point, the writer's considering adding the following sentence. When it was painted in 1932, Securos Miro was considered offensive, but now it is acclaimed. Should the writer make this addition here? All right. Well, if we think about it, what are we talking about right now? We're talking about how it was restored, and now it's bringing in lots of tourists. And we see our next sentence. We have advocates hope that his mural will once serve. So it will once more serve as an inspiration, this time inspiring viewers to save and restore an important cultural and artistic legacy. Well, if we were to put in when it was painted in 1932, we already know that, and Securo's mural was considered offensive, we already know that, and then, but now it is acclaimed, we already know that, because there's tourists that are attracted to it, has a visitor center, a rooftop viewing plat platform, right? So we already know all of this. If we want to avoid redundancy, repetition, and inefficient word choice. Those are the three things that we want to avoid when taking the SAT writing section, right? And we see that this is repetitive and redundant, so we don't want to use it. So we're not going to put it in, right? It is supported by the passage, so a D is out. Our answer is going to be C, no, because it unnecessarily repeats information from earlier in the passage. All right, questions 12 through 22 are based on the following. The hype of healthier organic food. Some people buy organic food because they believe organically grown crops are more nutritious and safer for consumption than the people who purchase? No, not than the people who purchase. And these crops aren't more nutritious and safer for consumption than the purchase of, or more nutritious and safer for consumption than purchasing. They're more nutritious and safer for consumption than their conventionally grown counterparts. So our answer is going to be D there, right? We want our comparison that they're more nutritious and safer for consumption than than what their conventionally grown counterparts that's what we're trying to compare it to right now we have which are usually produced with pesticides and synthetic fertilizers in the name of health spending well who's spending we need a subject right our only one with a subject here is B these consumers spend right in the name of health these consumers spend 1.6 dollars for every dollar they would have spent on food that is grown in a manner that is considered conventional conventional well that's not efficient right that's inefficient we always want to be efficient with our word choice which means we want to use less words that say more right grown in a manner that is considered conventional well we could just say conventionally grown right and it means the same thing and we don't have to use all those words because a lot of them are just filler Right, so our answer is going to be D. Now we have scientific evidence, therefore. Well, when I see this, I see scientific evidence, therefore. I know what I'm looking for is going to be a transition word, a contrast word, something like that. One word that connects my scientific evidence here, my previous sentence, and what follows together, right? So I'm told that these consumers spend more in the name of health. So these consumers think by spending more and getting this organic food, it helps them be more healthy. But then we're told scientific evidence what? It, well, it suggests that consumers don't reap significant benefits in terms of either nutritional value or safety from organic food. So this is contrasting opinions, right? The consumers think that it's worth it, but scientific evidence, however, suggests otherwise, right? So we wanna contrast. Our contrasting word is however. So our answer is gonna be C. All right, now we move down. 
Although advocates of organic food preserve that organic food is healthier than conventionally grown produce because it has more vitamins and minerals. Well, let's think. We have one word underlined, which means we're looking to either do no change or replace the word. Well, as we read and we read, although advocates of organic food preserve that, well, these advocates of organic food, what they're trying to say, what the author here is trying to say, is that they say that, right? But they're not going to use say, and say would be pretty simple. We'd want to use something more sophisticated, right? So we have, although advocates of organic food preserve, that's not a good way to say that someone is saying something, right? Carry on. That's kind of informal, and this is pretty formal, right? It's a formal paper about organic produce and its health benefits or lack thereof, right? And it's not that these advocates of organic food sustain that organic produce is healthier, it's that they maintain that, right? Maintain is the word that they're using to show that these advocates have a position in this argument, right? So our answer there is going to be maintain C. All right, we have this assertion is not supported by scientific research, and then we have for instance, right? So we would expect that we have scientific research following it that provides an example supporting how organic food isn't actually better for you. So we have one review published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition provide analysis of the results of comparative studies conducted over a span of 50 years. Researchers consistently found no evidence that organic crops are more nutritious than conventionally grown ones in terms of their vitamin and mineral content. All right, well, we see that that's supporting our statement here right, where this arrow is pointing. So we know that for instance works, right? We're giving an example of how organic food isn't actually healthier when you look at scientific research. So for instance is perfect right there. All right, at this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. The United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, reports that organic agricultural products are now available in approximately 20,000 markets specializing in natural foods. Well, let's think about it. What were we just talking about? We were talking about nutritional value, right? And mineral content. Well, now we're talking about availability of natural foods. So while we're still talking about natural foods, that's not the topic of our paragraph here. We're talking about nutritional value. So we want to stay on topic in this paragraph. So no, the writer shouldn't make this addition. And if we look at our answer choices, we see Choice D says no because it introduces a term that has not been defined in the passage. Well, it doesn't actually do that, but it isn't relevant to the paragraph's discussion of scientific evidence. So C is going to be our answer there. Now we have similarly Stanford University researchers who examined almost 250 studies comparing the nutritional content of different kinds of organic foods with that of their non-organic counterparts found very little difference between the two. So just adding more scientific evidence there. And now we're told, evidence also undermines the claim that organic food is safer to eat while researchers have found lower level of pesticide residue in organic produce than in non-organic produce. The pesticide residue detected in conventional produce falls within acceptable safety limits, so it's still safe. Organic to such, according to such organizations as the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the minute amounts of residue falling within such limits have no negative impact on human health. All right, well right here we see we have our verb, right? So we want our verb to match our subject. Well, our subject here, as we read, we see the minute amounts of residue falling within such limits have no negative impact on human health. So our subject here is going to be our minute amounts will be our subject. Well, minute amounts, that is plural. So if we have our plural subject, we have to have our plural verb. Have is our plural verb. So if we look at our answer choices, we know we're going to have no change, but just checking to make sure. We know we have a plural verb, right? So we're not going to have has, because if we think about it like this, he has, this is singular. That shows that has is going to be singular, right? So we can't have has. Then we'd have is having, which is not correct grammatically, so our answer here is going to be A. All right, now we have at this point the writer wants to further reinforce the paragraph's claim about the safety of non-organic food, which choice most effectively accomplishes this goal. To be labeled organic, a product must meet certain standards determined and monitored by the USDA. No, because we're talking about the safety of non-organic food here, right? What this A is talking about is it's just talking about in order to be labeled organic, but we want to show how safe non-organic food is. Choice B, organic food, however, is regulated to eliminate certain artificial ingredients that include certain types of preservatives, sweeteners, colorings, and flavors. Well, once again, we're talking about organic food. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about the safety of non-organic food. So if we look at C, we have, moreover, consumers who are concerned about ingesting pesticide residue can eliminate much of it simply by 
washing or peeling produce before eating it. Well, since we say pesticide residue, we know we're talking about non-organic food. All right, so see, we're talking about non-organic food, and we're talking about how we can make it safer, even if you were already worried about pesticides, you can eliminate most of that pesticides just by washing or peeling it, thus making it safe even if you were worried, right? And if we look at D, in fact, the Environmental Protection Agency estimates that about one-fifth of the pesticides used worldwide are all are applied to crops in the United States. Well, we don't really care where they're applied, right? All we're worried about is showing that non-organic food is safe. We don't really care about geography here, right? So our answer there is going to be C. Okay, now we got 21 and 22 still. So we have based on scientific evidence, organic food offers neither significant nutritional nor safety benefits for consumers. Proponents of organic food, of course, are quick to add that there are n numerous other reasons to buy organic food. Well, as soon as we see this, and we see this there, that there is possessive, right? So it's the wrong there. The correct there is T-H-E-R-E, -E, right? There are, and we know it has to be R as well, right? We're told proponents of organic food, of course, are quick to add that there are numerous other reasons, right? Our numerous other reasons are plural, and that's how we know we're going to have R, right? So we could think about it like this. There are apples, right? Apples would be plural, so we're going to use R. If it was singular, we would say there is an apple, right? So we can clearly see we use plural R when we have our plural numerous other reasons right here, right? our subject, or our, I'm sorry, what we're using our verb on, numerous other reasons, is plural, therefore, verb, plural, there, correct there, B is going to be our answer, to buy organic food, such as, well, we know we never need a comma after such as, right? Never need a comma after such as, so C is out and A is out, right? That's something that you need to know, or that you should know for the SAT, is that we don't need a comma after such as, right? All right, so now we're between B and D. Let's look at the differences. We have a colon here, no colon here, and we have a comma here, and no comma here. All right, well, when we read this, I'm going to erase this just so we can get a clearer picture. All right, so we have proponents of organic food, of course, are quick to add that there are numerous other reasons to buy organic food, right? And then they give, such as, a desire to protect the environment from potentially dangerous pesticides or a preference for the taste of organically grown foods, right? Well, if we look at our choice here between a colon after it or having a comma after food we know that such as a desire to protect the environment and so on so from here all the way to here well this is a non-restrictive this is non-restrictive right they're giving examples but they're not limiting it right well when we have a non-restrictive list like that what we're going to do is we have to have a comma before that non-restrictive list, right? So we're going to actually have to have this comma. This is required, right? So that's required, so we know our answer there is going to be D. You are where you say. Research on regional variations in English language use has not only yielded answers to such life-altering, well, we have a word underlined in the middle of a sentence, so we're looking to do no change or replace the word. Questions as how people in different parts of the United States refer to carbonated beverages. Well, that question is not life-altering, right? How people in the United States refer to carbonated beverages is not life-altering, so we can get rid of A. Now we read our question. We have the writer wants to convey an attitude of genuine interest and avoid the appearance of mockery. Which choice best accomplishes this goal? So we'll go ahead and fill in with our words and see if it makes sense and fit our question. So we have has not only yielded answers to such galvanizing questions, well, how people in different parts of the U.S. refer to carbonated beverages is not a galvanizing question, right? Now, is it an intriguing question? It is, right? And that shows genuine interest. They're intrigued by it. And it does not mock people, right? So that one right there is going to be our answer C. So now we have to go back here for answer 24, right? So we have research on regional variations in English language use has not only yielded answers to such intriguing questions, 
as how people in different parts of the United States refer to carbonated beverages, but also illustrates, right? And here's how we know that, because we have, it has not only, and when we see not only, we always, we, not always, but most of the time, when we have not only, we pair it with not only this, but also this, right? Or not only this, but also that, right? We pair not only with but, right? So we know our answer there has to be C. I'll circle that better. All right. So we have not only yielded answers to such intriguing questions on how people in different parts of the United States refer to carbonated beverages, but also illustrates how technology can change the very nature of research. While traditional human intensive data collection has all but disappeared, so we're looking to replace this or keep no change, and we're told we need to pick the choice that most effectively sets up contrast in the sentence and is consistent with the information in the rest of the passage. Well, we don't know the information in the rest of the passage, so we can try and just quick check if there's only one choice that shows contrast, right? So if we look at what comes after, we have the explosion of social media has opened new avenues for investigation. So we need old avenues for it, right? So we need to talk about how there were old avenues before. So we have, well, traditional human intensive data collection has all but disappeared. The explosion of social media has opened new av avenues. Well, if we're opening new avenues, that means there still are old avenues, right? So if there's still old avenues, we know that there still is an important place for the traditional human intensive data collection, right? Because now we're opening new avenues, but the old ones are still there, right? And they still have a role. So they still have an important place. So our answer there is going to be B. Because it's the only one that sets up the contrast in the sentence. And then we'll also come back to this just to make sure that it's consistent with information in the rest of the passage. All right, so we have one which means we're going to go take a look at our question asking about where a sentence should go. So we have to improve the cohesion and flow of this paragraph, the writer wants to add the following sentence. So we have data gathering proved to be a quick part of the project. All right, so what we know, data gathering comes before it, and we know that they gathered data fast, right? It was quick. They gathered the data. That was the quick part, which means the slow part comes after, right? So that's what we're looking to place it. All right, so now we can go back, read through, and keep that in the back of our mind. So we have perhaps the epitome of traditional methodology is the Dictionary of American Regional English, collectively known as DARE. Its fifth and final alphabetical volume, ending with Zydeco, released in 2012, the dictionary represents decades of arduous work. Over a six-year period, from 1965 to 1970, university graduate students conducted interviews in more than a thousand communities across the nation. Their goal was to determine what names people used for such everyday objects and concepts as a submarine sandwich, a hero in New York City, but a dagwood in many parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Colorado, and a heavy rainstorm, variously a gully washer, pour down, or stump mover. And then we have the work that dictionary founder Frederick G. Cassidy had expected to be finished by 1976 was not in fact completed in his lifetime, right? So that's indicating that the progress of the work slowed down. He expected it to be finished by 1976, but it wasn't, in fact, completed in his lifetime. So that's showing a slowdown. And if we go back up, we saw we collected data over a six-year period, and then we still hadn't completed it. We collected data to 1970, but we still hadn't even completed the project by that 1976. So it took six years after all that data was collected, and we still have not completed our project, right? So we see that it took longer than expected. So we know we're going to want to place our sentence between sentences four and five, because we want it to be right before we talk about how it took much longer than expected. So we want it to come before five and after four. So it should be placed after sentence four. All right, now we got question 26. So the weight did not dampen enthusiasm among scholars and then scholars again. We don't want to have scholars period and scholars again, right? We want to get rid of this. And we're already told scholars, so we can just put a comma after here. We can add our description of the scholars. What kind of scholars? The scholars who consider the work a signal achievement in linguistics, right? So we add that A positive describing our scholars. So our answer is going to be D. Now we're on to 28. We have not all research into regional 
English varieties require such time, effort, and resources. We have one word in the middle of the sentence. We're looking to replace it or no change. We see not all research. We have research as our subject. This into regional English varieties, we don't need to consider when determining what kind of verb we need. So we have research requires, not all research requires. Yep, right, we have requires, right? Because we have our singular research, so we're gonna have our singular requires. All right, so now we move on. We have today's researchers have found that the veritable army of trained volunteers traveling the country conducting face-to-face -face interviews can sometimes be replaced by another army. Well, when I read that, and I see can sometimes replace by another army, I see that as a phrase leading into what comes after, right? And when we're leading in to what comes after, what we can sometimes use is a colon, right? That can be used to show that we are moving in and we're introducing and adding emphasis on what comes after it, right? So I'm gonna look at my answer choices. I see I have a colon here, but I'm gonna make sure that that's right, right? So I've got, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back, read my sentence, and just make sure we have today's researchers have found that the veritable army of trained volunteers traveling the country conducting face-to-face -face interviews can sometimes be replaced by another army. Okay, now we wanna illustrate that concept in our previous sentence. And if we can do that, then we know that our emphasis works. We are expanding on our idea previously talked about so then we will use that colon. So we have the vast array of individuals volunteering details about their lives. Well, that's expanding on our idea about how the former traditional army of people can now be replaced by the social media army, right? So we're expanding on our idea, so we're gonna use a colon. So our answer there is gonna be D. All right, now when I see this, without even reading this, I see my next underlined one. I see site. I know that what they're probably looking at, since that's a word that has many different spellings, right? And they mean different things. That's probably what I'm gonna be looking at. So I've got Bryce Russ of U Ohio State University, for example, has employed software to sort through postings on one social media site. All right, well, what kind of site is it, right? Let's think, it's gonna be a website, right? It's not gonna be site as in you see something, and it's not gonna be site as in you cite it, like in when you're done with an essay and you're citing your sources, right? It's gonna be a website, S-I-T-E. Right, so we know our answer there is going to be B. And then we've got of particular words and phrases of interest as well as the location from which users are posting. From these data, he was able, among other things, to confirm regional variations of people's terms for soft drinks. As the map shows, soda is commonly heard in the middle and western portions of the United States. Pop is frequently found in many southern states, and Coke is predominant in northeastern and southwestern regions, but also elsewhere. All right, so we're asked in 31. The writer wants the information in the passage to correspond as closely as possible with the information in the map. Given that goal, and assuming that the rest of the previous sentence would remain unchanged, in which sequence should the three terms for soft drinks be discussed? So we're just making sure that our pop, coke, and soda is discussed correctly according to the map, right? So the first thing we're looking at is the middle and western portions of the United States. All right, so we've got our middle and western portion of the United States right here, right? We see that it's shaded in dark gray, and we know that that'll be pop. So we know our first choice will be pop, so we can get rid of A and D. Now we're looking at our second choice between soda and Coke. We're told our second choice is in southern states, right? So we're gonna look at southern states. Southern states are gonna be right here. We see that that will be Coke. So our second answer will be Coke. So we're gonna have pop, and then Coke, so our answer there will be C, and just to double check, soda then should be in the northeast and southwest. So we go ahead and check, northeast, southwest, and we have soda. So we know our answer is correct. Now we have, as interesting as Russ's findings are though, their true value, well, this is the wrong there, and we know that because we're talking about Russ's findings, that's our subject. So we have Russ's findings, well that's a plural subject, so we've got plural subjects. We need a plural verb that's also possessive because it's Russ's findings. So we need a plural possessive verb. So we can get rid of A and C because there is our plural possessive verb. Their true value lies in there, right? Russ's findings, the subject again. So we need another plural possessive pronoun, right? So we're gonna use there again. So our answer there is gonna be B. All right. 
Their true value reminds re, their true value lies in their reminder that the internet is not merely a sophisticated tool for collecting data, but is also itself a rich source of data. So we're asked which choice most effectively concludes a sentence and paragraph, and that is going to be no change, right? If we think about it, our whole entire section that we just read, right, our whole passage, is all about how in the past they required these vast teams to go around and do this research, right, because they needed that data and they didn't have it without doing that. But now they can use social media for that research. So social media and the Internet itself is a rich source of data. So we know that our answer there will be A. And now we got to remember we have to go back and look at, I believe it was around 27 or so, there was one we were asked, or 25, consistent with information in the rest of the passage. So 25. So we got to make sure it's consistent. So we have 25 is right here. All right, I'll put that star by it. So while traditional human intensive data collection has all but disappeared, we aren't told that. We're not told human intensive data collection has all but disappeared, so we can't use that. But we are told it still has an important place, right? So we know that our answer there is going to be B, and it's not the only option. The whole passage is about how internet is an option now, so we know our answer is not going to be C. Yields questionable results. We never question the validity in the section, so we know that, that can't be right either. So our answer choice there is going to be B. Creating Worlds, a career in game design. If you love video games and have thought about how the games you play might be changed or improved, or if you've imagined creating a video game of your own, you might want to consider a career as a video game designer. There were, no, there are a number of steps you can take to determine whether game design is the right field for you and if it is to prepare yourself for such a career. Well, if you look at this paragraph, we're talking in the present tense, right? So that's how I immediately knew that we needed to use there are. But even if you weren't looking at this section before it, just in the sentence, we see that we have the verb determine and the verb prepare, which are both present tense as well. So we know that we have to use there are because are is going to be present tense. So our answer is going to be not A. I miscircled that. Our answer is going to be R. So our answer there is going to be C. All right, and then 35. We're going to go ahead and work our way down there. Before making the choice, you should have some sense of what a video game designer does. Every video game, whether for a console, computer, or mobile device, starts with a concept that originates in the mind of a designer. The designer envisions the game's fundamental elements. The settings, character, and the plots that make each game unique and is thus a primary creative force behind a video game. Oh, we see where I'm putting these lines here. This is where all of our examples are, right? So we're giving examples. Well, we're not going to use our colon there to give these examples and then offset that with a comma like that, right? That's not what we're going to do. When we have those examples like that, what we can do is we can set them off with an M dash, right? So that's what we're going to do there. So our answer is going to be C. And the reason that we can't use our semicolon, right? We can't use a semicolon and another semicolon to offset our list of examples, right? That's not allowed grammatically. So we know D isn't right. Now looking at our choice in B, we can't use a colon and then use an M dash, right? That's not allowed either. Now we can't use a colon and then a comma to do the list because that is also not allowed grammatically, but we can use two M dashes, right? So that'll be our answer there. All right, now we've got question 36. Conceptualizing a game is only the beginning of a video game designer's job. So when I see this here, this is like the inverse of what we talked about before, where when we have a sentence and we have a word at the end, we'll just say, nothing and it wouldn't be capitalized because it's at the end but we'll say we had a period there and then the start of a new sentence right so this is like the inverse of that right here we'd be looking to combine them and right here we're actually looking to separate these right here to form two sentences because we have an independent clause conceptualizing a game is only the beginning of a video game designer's job so that's our independent clause there so that can be a sentence and then that however is with that as well right that's only the beginning of a video game designer's job, however. And then we have, no matter how good a concept is, it will never be translated into a video game unless it is communicated efficiently to all the other members of the video game development team. So that's also an independent clause. Well, what we see here is we have two commas. That's creating a comma splice, right? We have two independent clauses. And if we're going to use a comma, we have to use a comma with a fanboy, right? For, and, nor, but or 
yet or so, right? The fanboys, we have to use one of those. And we don't have one of those in here, we just have commas, so that's a comma splice, so we can't use a, right? We have two independent clauses, so using a period does work, right? That would split them. So we can use B, so B works grammatically. We look at C, we can't use an M dash to do it, and we look at D, and that M dash also splits that however, and that however should come after job, right? So that's another thing we know that it can't be C. And we look at D, D has nothing, D can't be correct either. Our answer there is gonna be B. All right, 37. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. Successful communication is essential if a designer's idea is to become reality. Well, that's right here. If we look at the sentence right before it, we say, unless it's communicated effectively to all members of the video game development team, it will never be translated into a video game. Well, this sentence that we're looking at putting in is just a restatement of that sentence. So our answer is going to be D, no, because it merely reformulates the thought expressed in the preceding sentence. All right, so now we've got question 38, and we have to go back. We've got a designer must generate extensive documentation and explain his or her ideas clearly in order to ensure that the programmers, artists, and others on the team all share the same vision. So we're asked for which choice results in a sentence that best supports the point developed in the paragraph. So we'll read on a little bit to see more of the point developed. We have anyone considering a career as a video game designer must be skilled writers and speakers. In addition, because video game development is a collaborative effort and because the development of any one game may take months or even years, a designer must be an effective team player as well as detail oriented. So we're talking about the things required to be a good video game designer and developer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for choice that sets up that point right about all the skills that you're going to need right and about how you need to be able to express your ideas clearly so a designer must generate extensive documentation and explain his or ideas clearly which is what we talked about right they have to be able to be a good skilled writer and speaker collaborative effort in order to develop the game everyone has to be on the same page same vision so we know our answer there is going to be a right it's not about constructive criticism, we never mentioned that, not about motivations, and it's not about vivid imagination, but it is about being able to express your ideas clearly. So now we're looking at our transition word here. Whenever we see the start of a sentence with a comma, that word is probably our transition word, so we're looking to connect our previous sentence to our next sentence. So we have, in our previous sentence, we're talking about how it's important to express video game ideas er, clearly, right? So our developer has to be able to communicate that to all the members of his team. And as a result of that, as a consequence, so consequently, anyone considering a career as a video game designer must be a skilled writer and speaker, right? They have to be able to communicate well as a consequence of that being a part of their job in order to successfully create games. So our answer there is C. Now we see that we have anyone considering a career as a video game designer, must be a skilled writer and speaker, right? Anyone considering a career as a video game designer, they must be a skilled writer and speaker, right? Anyone is singular. So we can't have skilled writers and speakers because anyone's singular. We can't have skilled both as writers and speakers because those are both plural. And then writers and speakers there are also both plural. We need singular because anyone is singular. So we're gonna have answer choice B as our correct answer. Now we see we have a one to start out our next paragraph, which means that there's a question regarding placement of a sentence. So we find that question first, so we can keep that in the back of our heads as we read through, and we don't have to read through the whole paragraph a second time. So we're asked about sentence five to make the paragraph most logical, where should it go? So we gotta find sentence five. It's right here, we have a designer also needs careful educational preparation. So we wanna place this before we start talking about educational preparation. So in part one, we have a basic understanding of computer programming as essential. Well, that's education. So just to make sure that that's not a blip, we read the next sentence. We have, in fact, many designers initially begin their pursuits as programmers. So we're talking more about education. Now we have considered taking some general computer science courses. That's education again. So our first three sentences are all about education. We need our education plan to come before that. So that's going to be our first sentence before sentence one. So placed before sentence one. So we want to lead into the specifics about that education because our first sentence that we just moved here 
as a general statement about the education that you're going to need and how you need to consider it. All right, so now we're looking at question right here where I put that star. So in fact, many designers initially begin, well, initially and begin mean the same thing, right? Start. So we got to get rid of one of them or replace both words with something else that means to begin. And their pursuits, pursuits is kind of, I mean, it's an okay word, but I mean, we're really talking about a career here. So we're looking for a word that is begin, right? Without initially, because those mean the same thing and begin their careers as programmers, right? They're beginning their jobs. They're not initiating their progression, right? That's a weird way to say it. We want to be efficient. We want to be clear. Start to begin, start and to begin. We don't need both of those. And A, we already talked about how initially begin doesn't work. So we're going to have D. All right. Consider taking some general computer science courses as well as courses in artificial intelligence and graphics in order to increase your understanding of the technical challenges involved in developing a video game. Courses in psychology and human behavior may help you develop emphatic collaboration skills. So we're looking for a word to describe our collaboration skills, right? Well, we know that taking these courses, because we're all talking about our educational plan, are important, right? These are crucial to being a video game developer. So our answer there is going to be D, right? They help you develop important collaboration skills, because we already talked about how being able to collaborate with other people on your video game development team is crucial, right? It's important. These are important collaboration skills. They're not eminent, they're not paramount, they're not emphatic, right? So our answer there is going to be important. And when you're picking words like this, like adjectives, you want to you don't want to pick words that are kind of way out there or crazy. You want to fit words that fit with the tone of the passage and that are clear and efficient in how they're used, right? So right there, important, it's perfect, it fits the tone. It's not at a reading level higher or lower than what we've been reading at in this passage. All right, so now we have, well, courses in the humanities, such as in literature and film, should give you the background necessary to develop effective narrative structures. A designer also needs careful educational preparation, but we don't need to read that because that's in sentence one. We have finally, because a designer should understand the business aspects of the video game industry, such as budgeting and marketing, you may want to consider taking some business courses. Although demanding and deadline driven, video game design, so our demanding and deadline driven is talking about our video game design, right? It's modifying it, it's our modifier. Well, if we we're looking at the choice of video game design, we're not saying that although demanding and deadline driven, the choice of video game design, we're saying video game design is a career. So we want it to directly modify video game design. We don't want it to modify you. We don't want it to modify choosing or the choice. We want it to directly modify video game design. So our answer there is going to be A. Thank you for watching Preeminent Test Prep. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share as we will be releasing more videos to help you prepare for the SAT.